Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Canadian Premier League Newsroom Podcast, probably the final one for 2021, and it will be a celebration of a champion, celebration of Pacific FC. Christian Jack joined by my guys, Marty Thompson and Charlie O'Connor-Clark. Gentlemen, welcome back from Hamilton. It was a special weekend and a special game to cover. Uh, we'll get your thoughts on Pacific shortly, uh, but let's start on the overall weekend, a celebration of what has been a tremendous season, Marty. It's, uh, it's been... It's funny, we were just talking with Charlie last night. It's been long. It's been short. It's been long and short. It feels like it's been everything in between. Um, it was the perfect culmination of everything. Um, for everything that's gone into this league, from the players, staff, us, everybody. I mean that quite genuinely, to especially to the two of you. Just the amount of work that went in this year and to get something like that. And, to, and frankly, to get a game like that, let alone Pacific winning, obviously, is fantastic. But to get a game like that was just so special. And Marty, yeah. you started off as a champ because you went in the bubble and you end as the champ because you picked the winners. Yeah, obviously. So, yeah. yeah. You're yeah. the only I mean, one. That's I was... <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah, that's true. Yeah, I guess so. Yeah. You got, you got the guys. You got the winners. Yeah. Uh, Ch- Charlie, yeah. Your, own, your overall thoughts of being there in Hamilton all week? Yeah. No, it was a lot of fun. Uh, and it's just really nice to have had this weekend, you know, because I think this this time last year, it didn't feel like it was something that we were going to be able to do for right for a while and i think we have to kind of take stock of that and it's great but it was a whole the whole weekend that was fantastic i mean shout out to all of the forge supporters that were around in the stadium and and the night before and all the pacific traveling support as well that was fantastic shout out to just everybody that you know was a part of what ended up being a really special weekend for the sport and for obviously for vancouver island especially Mm -hmm. but for the sport and the country as a whole it was just just amazing no doubt about it we will recap the final shortly and stay with us because throughout the day on this show you're going to hear from palmer ducar from captain jamar dixon from alessandro hajabrapur callum irving josh heard marco bustos manny apariso lucas mcnaughton Caden Chung, and almost every other player that didn't mess with me that much. That's uh, a lot. All courtesy of my interviews after the game, and we sent one soccer for the audio and for the video, wherever your, pre- your preference is. And we'll get to those shortly. It is a celebration of a champion, as we alluded to. Uh, Pacific FC beat Forge FC by one goal to nil on a second half goal and headed by Alessandro Hajabrapur from a free kick. And we talked about it. Set pieces can be so often the crucial def- decider in a final. And the way they got to this is important to talk about because we were talking about it last night over drinks or that maybe moved into Monday morning over drinks. I can't remember. It blends into two or three things these days, gentlemen. But at one point I was talking to somebody and I can't remember it was, but it felt like if the first half had been extended any longer than it was, two or three minutes, I think Forge were going to score because Pacific were on their heels at that point. And they were comfortable being up against the ropes, but it looked like they were more than up against the ropes. They were almost down on the canvas in that first half. But that says a lot about sticking it with it, does it not, Charlie? Let's go to you for that first. It absolutely does. And, you know, obviously I think Pacific knew coming into this game that there would be storms to weather, right? And I think if you'd have asked them, it would have been just, we're, we're going to bend, but just don't break. And that's exactly how it worked. I think really... Just the way that Pacific needed this game to play out is what happened. I th- I can't remember which Pacific player it was that said after the game that, you know, we, we felt like we were going to get that one chance. Yeah. Like Ford would have all days, but we're going to get one. And if we score that, then then here we go. It might have been Jamar Dixon, to be I honest. I guess we're we'll going to hear him all, aren't we? We're going to hear from him, yeah. We're going to yeah. find out. <laughs> yeah. but, but that's that's really what it was. I mean, Pacific were very clear in what they wanted to do in this game. They wanted to play very direct counter-attacking football, you know, many Mauricio would win the ball or Josh Hurd would win the ball and they'd be gone in a straight line, right, immediately. Yeah. And and it worked. I mean, the way that they scored, it's uh, it's Johnny Dos Santos getting behind Cisse on a very direct play, getting pulled down to win a set piece, which they had been working on specifically for those moments. And then the set piece comes off perfectly, really. Uh, I, 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 we hear, we've heard that Jabberpore was supposed to be the decoy runner. Right, but you know the ball oh, he just said, came. He said as much. He said he, he did. He did. Yeah. They well, they they were actually quite open about this. These set pieces. They said, I think did Pa say that they worked on them for three days. Three days, just yeah. the set pieces. Yeah, uh, yeah. I don't you know, think it was the it. entire day, but I yeah. hope not. It seems like a lot. I'm sure Bobby well, was like at the oh, end of the day. I'm sure, I'm sure Bobby was like, oh well, we're on a plane. You can just carry on working on your set pieces. <laughs> exactly. But at at the end of the day, that's that's where the goal came from, and they knew that they were going to get those opportunities, whether it's a corner or again. If you beat a man in a in a direct run, 
he's going to foul you and you're going to get that free kick. So if they have those routines set up, they have them tight, then that's what makes a difference. And I think Pacific knew what they needed to do in this game and it, it, it went off. Like that's, that's probably, probably the most that, that they would say is, you know, plan successful. Uh, we'll address this later, and I and I think I addressed it, and they all kind of roll into one, but with Callum Irving. So we'll hear from that in a, in a little bit later on as well, but I, I, we will stick to our same order. But my point being, Marty, is that I think the biggest takeaway from this was how comfortable they were at nil-nil, and even though they got on the ropes in the second half, at the end of the first half, when it went to one-nil, they feel like it felt like they were even more comfortable. You know, we always expect, okay, Forge, you're going to find that other gear, and Forge couldn't find that other gear, and Pacific did defensively, they almost went to another level, right? Because you can't exactly say, apart from a couple of saves here and there, that oh, suddenly Forge had all these chances at 1-0. And that's kind of what Pamadou Kaw said after the game. I know we're going to hear from from him from, from pitch side, but speaking to us specifically, you know, he just talked about, obviously they hadn't beat Forge, right? They hadn't beat Forge over three years, but especially this year. And he just said, you know, we've played a certain way and we never got anything out of it. It's like, we need to play a different way to get something out of it. Right. And then you could tell that the players were like hundred percent just reacting to that in real time. And, you know, it was so funny. Paul also asked us to, 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 to mention the stats. We didn't <laughs> know exactly what that meant, but like, I think forge ended with what? 70% possession, 17 shots, something like yeah. that. And like well, Pacific or sorry, go ahead. Charlie. Yeah. 16 shots, but only two of them on target. Yes, that's right. Same, same, same number as Pacific. They, yeah. you're bang on though, Christian. They never like the confidence was so was was there the entire time, and they never stopped running. Man, this this team never stopped running. Manny kept going. I'm so glad that Charlie picked him for man of the match on Campiel because he's thoroughly deserved. Yeah, I thoroughly agree, yeah. deserved. And yeah. just like such such like just the spirit of the team again. I know we've talked about it quite a bit, but yeah, never had never let their heads drop. Another CPL champions. And that, by the way, is not an underrated story either. If you're going to play that way. You have to have that spirit. Yep, you have yes. to have that togetherness and you have to have that we before me. It's the only way it's going to work. And right? that that is like maybe, I mean, maybe except for Forge or Pacific. Those are the two teams I would say that could play that way in this league. Right. Right. Tomorrow, right? Yeah. The, like yeah. just because of the culture, because yeah. of everything. So it makes yeah. from a sense. mental from a mental perspective, it is difficult to be on a pitch and just have to take on so much pressure and play without the ball so much. And yeah. you, hold on to that belief that you know this is okay that we're comfortable with this it's really difficult to do that as a player so it's a huge testament to the coaching staff and to the preparation that they did for this game and you know that again the, the the heart of this group that they were able to get this done because it was not easy no not at all let's get into this let's get some reaction as i said i was pretty i was pretty fortunate to get from some of these interviews and uh, all of these are courtesy of Juan soccer my sideline interviews and on the pitch and some of them in the dressing room we'll get to as well uh and we start with a pretty emotional man before i get into this interview uh palmer Ducar was crying on, on the pitch no doubt about it he needed some time on his own he let the players develop he go and celebrate he had a bit of a FaceTime going on with some family members and particularly the family members of the owners as well and uh, I let him bide his time because I didn't want to get in there. But when he was ready, um, I got three very precious minutes uh, with the head coach of Pacific FC. And as I, as I said on Twitter, every word was pretty poignant. Here it is, uh, Pamaduka with me after the game. I'm here with the winning coach of the 2021 Canadian Premier League, Pamaduka. How does that sound? I don't know. It's, it's, it's emotions are running now because two, these two past two years has been tough tough for everybody and and for us to come here and like I said the one game that matters I knew deep down that that's the game that we're gonna stand and today the boys showed that all stats that everybody write doesn't matter this will be the game that will go down in the history when you when you are carrying the spirit of an island and you have the backing of an island that's a strong statement for people and we are one club, one island, one community. We are Pacific football. That's why we're here. What about the team effort? You just said the last two years have been tough. Do you know what else is tough? Your team. How they dug deep tonight. What did that take for you to watch that team and how proud are you of that collective effort? Oh yeah, to see them, it's, it's like I say, KJ, every single day that they've been giving their heart to us, to the club, to the technical staff. To be able to see this is because they deserve it. And all is through the hard work. And here you have young players that people didn't want it. People didn't want them. 
and here they are standing tall, standing strong and are the champions of Canada. But that's also speak a lot the volume of the Canadian Premier League. Right? This is magnificent for these people. Just look at them. Just look at them. This is the best feeling you can ever have. And I'm so and I'm in gratitude with them. All my work is through them. I know you don't like talking about yourself, but just owe me a couple of questions if you don't mind, please. What was it like, the final whistle? What was that feeling like? Who do you think of at that moment? My family. My family, my wife and my kids, you know, my parents, for all the backing that we had through my life, right? This has been unbelievable. And uh, yeah, my wife and my kids, I hope they could have been here, but yeah, it goes to them. They're still watching at home. Final one for you. You and I have had a lot of deep conversations about what life is important about on and off the pitch, yeah. away from the microphone and yeah. on it. You know, and what you represent, my friend. You know, not every coach looks like you and you're a trailblazer in our league yeah. and what you're doing in professional football. Does that sit with you right now as well and what you can do and what helps other people and get minorities opportunities in these moments? 100%, 100%, absolutely, right? This, this is one of the reasons why I started to coach mostly to help young players get better, give them the opportunity, but also people like myself to get the opportunity to, sh to showcase that not only can we play, but also we can be coaches, we can, we can be in leadership positions, and to able to do it is magnificent. And I hope that that leads opening doors for other people, you know, to step into it and, and do the job. Amen. Couldn't say it any better myself. I'm so happy for you. Thank you, brother. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Pretty special moments on the pitch. And he's, a, he's that kind of guy, no? Like, I mean, we have the privilege and pleasure to talk to him on a regular basis. And um, I know a lot of people listening and watching don't. And so it should be stressed that he's genuine. He is what he is. And he is what you see, is what you get. And that's the best thing I can say about a lot of people for me. And um, I was just delighted for him, Marty, just to see those kind of emotions coming from part. You guys got to do it in the press conference as well. But uh, you can see, right, that he, that he, what it means to him is special. Uh, Kenny, one of our videographers, got a great shot of him. It looked like he was about to do a trust fall as soon as the yeah. final whistle went. Where he whistle. just went, he just went, he just went numb. And it's one of those things that you can just tell. I'm glad you touched on the the genuineness, Christian, because that was just a genuine reaction to it. Mm. It's just again, you know, like the, the way he talks about his players, and he already talked about, frankly, all the players that have been cut from the Whitecaps on this team. Yeah, here's what the Whitecaps like. You can feel that emotion. Yeah. yeah, and and Pa, you know, he's not a guy that ever wants to talk about himself or or what this means to, to him specifically. He'll always say, you know, these championships are for the players. This is uh, winning every game is for the players. But we can talk about him and we can say that, you know, I feel really good for him. <laughs> I'm really happy for Pa specifically as well because of the work that he's put in with this club on and off the pitch and all they've done. Because as, as he said, it's been a really tough two years for everybody. Yeah, and, and you know, I, I think Pa is extremely deserving of of credit, a lot of credit for what he's done with this club over two years. Well, there's that human side, right, that shouldn't be lost. Like, of course, his job is to what win football matches and to create a culture and make players better men and better players, which is ticking all of the boxes, right? You, we yeah. talked to Lucas McNaughton on our show last week, and he just couldn't say enough words about how he's helped him be a better player as a centre back and a better man, and he's doing that, right? But, you know, when he goes the extra mile, and Paul's got that in him, when he's got that extra level of anger or a little bit higher level of volume when he speaks, the players will respond to him because he knows that, by the way, as I said last, on the last couple of weeks of the show, when the players are limping off after giving 120 minutes in Calgary and giving everything, it's not, thanks, that's your job. It's a massive warm embrace of, yeah. of complete and utter gratitude for what they've done. And that's why the players, Marty, run through walls for this guy because he, he can give it both ways. And again, back to that genuineness. That's why they win the championship. Like objectively, there right. there are teams there are teams in this league that are as good as Pacific on paper and 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 in theory. But that's the reason why. That's what got them over the lump in both games, both semifinal and final. Like that. That's it's it just it, sports is such a weird thing in that a lot of people like to talk about the the sort of I mean statistics and analytics and all that kind of stuff. But like you can't really deny that that was what what did it, and that's such a like a powerful thing to see yeah let's let's yeah. talk about the leadership on this team charlie before we get to hear from him jamar dixon was the one who lifted the shield um yeah. another great human no another terrific leader and uh, you know a, a soft-spoken quiet leader right but Absolutely. one that just represents everything that this club needed jamar dixon is a player that you know isn't always getting the highlights or, or the headlines on the pitch even though he is a very good 
central midfield and a very important part of this team. But he's the kind of player that this club needed, I think, because they're a very young team, especially at the time when he came in, uh, just at, at the start of the second season, when they were the youngest team in the league. And they needed a player who has that kind of experience and that kind of leadership quality to just come in there. And and I think there are a lot of those young players on the team. I, Christian, I think it might have been Caden Chung that said this to you right. uh, about Jamar Dixon. No, he has helped these young players just become so much more mature on and off the pitch and just really, really buy into everything. And and obviously it all starts with pause, we've said, but you know, as a player, you also look to those other players as well for this kind of guidance. And Jamar Dixon is, you know, this this heart and soul player who everybody loves and is a big part of this club. And I'm, you know, again, <laughs> really happy for him. I'm happy for all of these players, to be honest, mm-hmm. because, you know, they've obviously had a long year. It's been a tough year for Pacific at many yeah. points. You know, then they've had all these all these injuries and, and whatnot and, you know, falling out of first place and, and not getting to play at home in the playoffs and so on and so forth. But, you know, again, it's down to, these kinds of heart and soul players that help get them over the line when it was, when it really mattered, really. Dixon's a proper captain, a yeah. proper captain. And I said to down my Instagram, uh, you know, the favorite people always ask me, what's your favorite part of your job? And I know my answer. My favorite part of my job is covering winners. And I don't care who wins, but that moment when I get to cover them, that feeling of elation when you see them lift that trophy and that what they do as a group and how many months it's taken. That's the favorite part of it. And I was fortunate to be where I needed to be yesterday and seconds, literally seconds after the final whistle went, I spoke to Jamar Dixon. Here it is. Let's get in here. I'm here with the winning captain. Seconds after the final whistle. I know you're still getting all the love from your teammates, but what are you feeling right now? It's this amazing feeling. Amazing feeling. We've been working from day one for this. You can see how much it means to these boys. Everyone's talking about three Pete, this, that. Honestly, Woo! we're not losing final. Champions, baby! That's Champions. what it is, baby. That's what it is. You've never beat this team. It was a back to the wall effort. You score on a set piece and then defensively you're immense in the second half. Talk to us about what it was like without the ball. Honestly, I, I realized early like they were always going to be on me and around me. They had numbers everywhere. Hats off to them, to be honest. They, they, they were very compact. So I realized for me, I just had to stay balanced with the team. I had to offer something else. If I couldn't get on the ball, I had to be defensive and help the team in, in another way, which is what I did. And honestly, hats off to, to Ali. He, he got a one chance. I told these guys we're going to get one chance. One chance. And we got it, and that's what happens. I'm going to speak to you in a minute after it, but you're about to lift the North Shield, the North Star Shield, as the captain of this team. What's that going to be like for you? Man, uh, it's a blessing. Honestly, it's just a blessing. That's all I can say. It means so much to me. Take it in. Congratulations, my friend. All right, thank you. Yeah! Get one chance. And they got there one chance. And the man who scored it was his midfield partner, Alessandro Hajab Report. I'm going to get into him in a second, but let's hear from him now. I'm here with the hero of the day. Scored the winning goal, Alessandro Hajab Report. How does this feel, man? Oh, what a feeling, man. You do this all year for this one game, and, you know, things went away a little bit, but that's the game. you got to get a little bit of luck, your hard work, and beautiful moment. I don't even know what to say. Let's talk about your goal. We'll get to the team effort in a second, but the ball comes in, you head it, and it goes in. What's the feeling like? Oh, indescribable. I don't even know what I was thinking in the moment. I just saw all my teammates there and ran to them, you know. Those are the moments you play for. Those are the moments you play for. You were absolutely immense all season long, but this effort without the ball in midfield, talk to me about the collective effort to get this done today. Man, Forge is a brilliant team on the ball, so we knew at times we weren't going to have it. So we sat, we waited for our opportunity, Sometimes it's set pieces that win you games, you know? That's the modern day football, and that's how we got it done today. Go enjoy it, hero. Thank you, Thanks, appreciate man. It, man. Appreciate it. Really Thank appreciate you. your support, man. Oh, all best. Really, actually. Yeah, Thank no, you. appreciate it. Thank you. Before you go, Christian, I just want to say, this is about as, as raw footage as we possibly get. There's yeah. going to be some really funny bits here for the rest of the show. That's if funny. you're listening to it on podcast, you may want to just flip over to the YouTube after and watch it because there's some funny moments. That's some a great mo- that's a great moment at the end there. Yeah. I, I, re- I genuinely appreciate this. Do you know what? I appreciate him because you know we're all in this to cover the league and we genuinely don't care who wins. We genuinely don't. Um, but sometimes you develop guys, you just, that's my guy, just as a player. <laughs> You know what I mean? Just how you find players that you relate to. That guy's my guy. That guy, I, I love that guy as a player. And what he does, he's got that great blend of toughness and elegance in his midfield. He reads, he'll play center back for you. He's great in the air. He intercepts. He reads the game supremely. 
and he knows what he's good at and he knows what he's not good at. And that's a perfect compliment for a player too. And I was thrilled that he got nominated for under 21. And I was thrilled that he got that winner as well. Um, so, and you know, you could just see what it meant to him. Right. And, and, and it's just, just that genuine enthusiasm that, that comes off the microphone, Charlie. Great. It's just a, a delight for him. He had a terrific year and he deserves all the thought it to get. Yeah, it, it, he really does. He absolutely does. Uh, I think after when, when Marty and I talked to Pa in the post-match press conference, he said that that was maybe the most he'd ever heard Hajabarpour speak. Because <laughs> he, was, he was quite animated after the game. And just you could see it on his face how much this has meant to him. And yeah, he's, he's a player that's been at Pacific since the beginning. He's still only 21 years old, mm. which is in, incredible to me. Yeah. I think we, we don't... Yeah. Th- this is why, like... Third year, third year pro at Pacific, right? Yeah, exactly. 21. Exactly. 21. And, you know, deservedly nominated for, for young player of the year. But, you know, I think a lot of, a lot of people might've forgotten that he was even eligible for that right. because he's been around for so long in this league and doing so well. But yeah, it, I, as he said, he knows what he's good at. He knows what he's not. He himself was stunned that he got on the end of a set piece with his head. That look <laughs> on his face. Just, yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Like and and again, just a guy that has has been a big part of this club, and I just couldn't be happier for him. Yeah, again, in that great. post-match press conference, he said that was the greatest day of his life. Yes. Yeah. yeah. The it's greatest great. moment of his life was scoring the CPL moment. final. I love that. I love I can, that. doesn't get any better than that. Uh, let's go back on the field, and uh, it's a big day as well. Another clean sheet in a big game, and he made some crucial saves. And by the way, being behind the goal a lot for him, this man's a true leader on this team. You can see the amount of times he talked to him. Here's goalkeeper Callum Irvin. I'm here with goalkeeper Callum Irvin. Boy, oh boy, you had to be immense today as well. Some big saves, particularly in the first half. What's this feeling like for you? It's uh, somewhat indescribable. I'll try my best. It's uh, it's a culmination of all our hard work, right? They say it every time, but it truly feels like that. This team has uh, put a lot of work in um, through this whole season and over this 90 minutes, and uh, to get rewarded for it is something really special. It's really special, and you also just use the word team. Yeah. What a team effort today, no? That's... I mean, that's what we try and preach all season, uh, you know, and uh, today we knew it was 90 minutes and that's all that it took and uh, we just had to do whatever it takes to win and I thought everybody was just immense, immense. When the goal goes in at the other end, how does that change your mentality at that point? Because you had a bit of a back to the wall moment in the first half. What's the feeling like when you go up a goal? I think it uh, gives you a bit of confidence in, in what you're doing, right? Uh, everything's a little edgy at nil-nil, but at one-nil you have that little bit more belief, uh, that little bit more confidence, and I think uh, it showed in how we defended and how we played. You deserve this. Final comment. The people at home, a lot of fans couldn't make it across country, but they've been with you all season long. You come here in the home of the champions and you do it for the island. What does that mean for you? It means everything. Our fans are unbelievable. Uh, They're singing behind my goal every game and uh, coming out to support us, rain or shine. And I know it's been a tough year for them and we felt the support from home. We saw their messages before we played today and uh, they make all the difference. So this one's for you. That word on your hat, champion stays forever. Congratulations. Thank you so much. Thanks. Thanks. It certainly does stay forever. Uh, by the way, the screen's getting wetter and wetter if you're watching yeah. it. Uh, shout out to Nora Stankovic, who was just an, an absolute champ, champ uh, during all this process. We're getting so you can see that you can feel, if you're listening, the, mo- the microphone feels a little bit overmodulated. But I'm shouting because the music is so loud. The people talking in your ear, you got it's just it's the, the conditions were were, were nuts. Um, but yeah, Tom Irvin, just a great presence back there, and, and, a, and a calming presence in a, in, in, a, in a team that you need different personalities. Uh, let's go back down on the pitch and get some more reaction from Pacific. And I believe one of their attackers is next. I'm here with Josh Hurd, yeah. seconds after winning this. What's it mean to you? Everything, man. We, we, we've been working so hard since February. And you can see, man, we grinded. And it, if this is what it's all about. We won it. It feels great. A team effort, no? In every way. Does that mean it, it, even more special? It means every every more special, man. We, you can see we all fought. All of us together as a collective unit. That's what it's about. We're going to go enjoy this now. You should enjoy it. One final thing. You'd never beaten this team. You had to come across country yeah. to beat the team that's two-time champions. Yeah. How sweet is that? It's perfect. We were due for it, right? It was. Uh, it's a perfect story. So, yeah, I mean... Let's go celebrate. I, I'm, a, I'm a loss for words a little bit, but thanks for everything. Yeah, we appreciate all the words you found. Congratulations. <laughs> appreciate it. Thanks, Thank guys. you. He was very good too. You have to remember, you know, Bustos. We're going to hear from a second, but was not. Put, he was not going to play. He was a substitute in the game. He was barely going to get on the pitch in this game as it was. No Bustos. No Diaz. And a game where you needed your forwards 
Charlie, I'll throw this one to you, to stay in the game and keep the ball occasionally. And he, him and Campbell, they never lost sight of that. They were excellent in Calgary as well. Yeah. And then they were the same again in this final. Yeah, I, I mean, we we spoke about this with Aparicio earlier, but I would also be interested to see how many kilometers Josh Hurd ran just yeah. up and down the touchline in this game, right? He was he was just phenomenal at, at just making those driving runs. And, you know, as soon as they win the ball, he'd be out out of a cannon just trying to force Forge to run backwards and, and make something happen, just make something happen. And he was he's just a phenomenal part of this team. And he's, again, been a guy that's shown up when it's really mattered for Pacific, he was probably the probably one of the best players on the pitch in that Whitecaps game. Definitely. He was immense in that game. Yeah, and again here he's a big game player, and I think he's also a, a player that's a big part of you know the culture of this club and, and the togetherness of that group. Yeah, just a good guy again, right? Full of exactly. this team's full of talking of good guys. Um, you would probably say I'll say I'll use the word arguably just to keep it safe, but. <laughs> Arguably, their best player all season was Marco Bustos, who obviously got significantly injured twice in this season and was able to not contribute in the semi final or the final. I think played 52% of their regular season minutes. Uh, but boy, oh boy, he made those count when he was on the pitch uh, as a true difference maker and uh, couldn't play in this game. But most importantly, unlike Cavalry in the semi final, he was there and he was dressed and ready if they needed to him. Uh, to get him on there. And uh, Marco Bustos didn't get in the game, but is a champion. Here he is after the game. I'm here with Marco Bustos, who wasn't able to play today, but played a massive part in the year. What's this feeling like for you? No, it's amazing. You know, uh, I lost my voice here, but, you know, I'm a champion now. I would have loved to play, but these guys went out and played with all their heart and everything that they had. And I'm just so proud of this club and being a, being a part of it. And, uh, you know, we're going we're gonna to enjoy this tonight. And... Uh, I got no no other words to say, but it's been it's been a it's been a long ride. What about being here though? You weren't there for the semi final, but you were with this team most of the year. Feels good to be here, surely. Yeah, you know uh, they asked me, you know, what can you give us? You know, I said I can come. I'm gonna try to get better every day, but you know, at the end of the day, I want to be here, and I think uh, just being part of it, being uh, being around the team, and being on the bench, and just being part of it is is a great feeling for sure. You're a champion forever, man. Enjoy it. Thank you. That's history. <laughs> that, totally is. that for me, sorry, that for me is the best evidence yet of what we've been saying about this group and, and you know, the, the identity of this club because Marco Busos is a star in this league. Mm -hmm. He's one of the best players in the whole league. Wasn't able to be a huge part of this last chapter of the season. And it still means the world to him just to watch those guys celebrating that championship. And that to me says a whole lot about that club and that and Marco himself as well. No doubt. Like the Ronald Acuna in baseball. Didn't get to play. Still a champion. I just, yeah. just throwing out there for my brain. <laughs> you had to. You had to. <laughs> I had to do that. Uh, one of the also great things about that clip, if you want to go back and watch it, is that Samake is wearing McNaughton's shirt. On the, yeah. <laughs> it was the awesome. There were, there, I think there were multiple McNaughton's out there. I don't know how many. They, they, they were constantly swapping shirts. There was Charlie. something going on with all the jerseys. Yeah. They're all wearing them backwards. To be but... fair, the way McNaughton played, it looked like there was more than one of them on the <laughs> How good was yeah. that? By the way. Yeah. And I saw Samaki before the game and I went up to him and I said, I'm so sorry you're able to play. Obviously got hurt in the semi-final, but he played a big part in getting them there. And it's great that he was able to enjoy that on the pitch as well. Um, all right. Let's get to talk about probably, and I know there's not an award in our league for this, but if there was an MVP of the playoffs, I think oh, yeah. Manny no Aparicio question. would win this award. No, Marty, Marty's going no question. And I think yeah. Charlie's nodding along. So I agree. We're all in complete agreement the best player in the playoffs, unquestionably, uh, Manny Aparicio. Before we hear from him uh, in the champagne shower, Charlie, you wrote about it. You made him your man of the match. What impressed you the most about him in the final? I think we've already said it, just the amount of ground he covered. There were moments in that match when I was genuinely surprised that he'd managed to get to that part of the field because I'd just seen him putting pressure on a defender on the other side, mm. right? He was, he was involved in everything in this game from, you know, box to box from flank to flank. And again, I, I think that Manny Aparicio is maybe the, the heart and soul of this club at the moment on the pitch, certainly. And he's just such a, like an electric player to be, to be a teammate of on the pitch in a game like that. You would, uh, you'd feel pretty good watching him just cover every plastic blade of turf on Tim Hortons <laughs> field and what just while we're talking about Aparicio 
I know we haven't mentioned it yet, but I think more than any other player on a specific team, I am extremely excited to see him play in a CONCACAF league. Yeah. <laughs> yes, we're talking about this today. Yes, he's going to be so good. He's going to yeah, mash yeah. them. Yeah. Uh, and then it, it, I'm so glad you mentioned Manny and how much he was running too, because like when he got moved out to the wing there at the end, when they kind of changed shape, yeah. it was like, you know, how many players after running as much as he did for like 80 minutes would be down to do that? He yeah. did it and he ran even more. Yeah. Like, he yeah. ran even more. Yeah. And it's uh, sometimes players get moved at different times. It doesn't work out. And sometimes you think why in sports. It's awesome. He was the perfect signing for the perfect team at the perfect time. Yeah. Right. Because that was the one to take them forward. Like they, their goals and they, they've been the best attack this year. Yeah. But in the trenches, he complimented the Jad Rapport and Dixon, right? Or Bassett even playing there sometimes during the season. But when he was at his best, he was the springboard. He was the energy to push up and make as a number 10. He was everything that, you know, you want from an attacking midfielder who does the dirty work and come deeper and distribute the ball quickly, thinks fast, brings incredible athleticism. Um, and so, yeah, it's hard to think how they even win it without him, right? And, and it is a team, no doubt. But you take that piece out and it's like, phew, it might all fall apart. Um, here he is in the dressing room after the match with me. You can smell the champagne in these clips, by the way. <laughs> Come on in with me. Mario Aparicio in here, sipping the champagne. Just take a little sip of it again. What does that feel like, my man? Oh, amazing. Like, it's been eight years as a pro, never in this moment. Three years in the league, this is what I made the move for. Just amazing. I took. I think he deserves a drink. You never, you never stop running the whole game. I think you at least deserve a drink. Celebrating like this with your boys, what's it feel like? Oh, amazing, amazing, amazing. We know this is what we started the season for. This was our goal, and we achieved it. We we grinded that game out. We gave it all we had, and we got the result. Thanks, Manny. No problem. Thank you. It's incredible. <laughs> I love Josh Hur's deadpan face just jumping up and down behind him at the end there. Yeah. I think was, for anybody yeah, anybody listening on audio, I think you need to you need to watch this with your eyes. Yeah, yeah. just please tune, tune in and watch it. But as I said to him there, anybody needed a drink, it was that guy. Right. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like, no. My about yards that he covered. Um let's go back to the dressing room and um as I said earlier, Lucas McNaughton, what a personality this guy is. And uh, I had to speak to him. I found him and I eventually got a hold of him. And uh, as I said, another party down there in the Pacific dressing room. All right, my man. He doesn't know it's a. He doesn't know it's a throwaway camera. Oh, I gotta wind it. Hey. I'm here with Lucas McNaughton. What a game that was individually from you as well as the team defensively what's this feeling like feels amazing i told you so <laughs> ah! so we it's what we've been waiting for we worked all year and this team shows up in the big moments and and i can't see i'm drowning but this team shows up in the big moments and uh it feels amazing we've been waiting for it and it's finally here you had to lead a defensive line all game but you had a lot of the ball Without the ball, when you score, the belief is in you right away. You're going to win this. We had a chance at the beginning of the game. And when you get a big chance at the beginning of the game, that's when the belief comes. Same thing happened against Calgary. You're watching the game. And when you're in the game and you get a big chance early on, you know you have, you're have you going to have those moments. And, and we capitalized on one of them. We defended as a block, as a unit. We shifted well. And they couldn't break us down. That's what it comes down to. Your season could have been over. You didn't get to play in the semi-final, you were suspended, you sat there and waited for moments like this. Does that make that a little bit sweeter? Of course, of course. But like I said before, this is a, this is this is not one player that makes this team, this is the whole team. And we've had injuries, we've had suspensions, we've we've done it the difficult way. And when you do the difficult way, the whole team shows up and you win. That's 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 what makes it that much sweeter. And finally, you beat Forge. That's gonna make it even sweeter. Doesn't matter who we beat. No, but the two-time champs. I mean, yeah, to, yeah. to go through the best, you gotta beat the best, right? You gotta make it the best. You gotta be the best. You gotta you gotta do the hard way, and and we did the hard way. So here we are.
congratulations. Thank Enjoy you. it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I, I got you. Oh. 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 Let's go. <laughs> somehow, somehow through the madness, he actually found some really interesting things to say. You know, the most yeah. important thing I think he said there for me was they couldn't break us down. That was at the forefront yeah. of his mind the entire game. This team cannot break us down. And watching the game, him leading that back line, you can see why that was embedded in his brain, Marty, because yeah. he just led this team to stop arguably the best team in the Canadian Premier League not getting glorious chances, particularly in the second half. And that's a massive credit to him, even though he didn't want to talk about himself. Well, we'll talk maybe a bit about Forge, maybe not, but the first half and the movement in that team, like I remember looking over at Charlie and saying, I think this is the best that Forge's attack has played this year right. before they got a goal. It was it was swarming. It was hectic. I know Jamar mentioned the the numbers that they had. And the fact for someone like Lucas, who missed the semifinal, um, to come in and lead that group is another is another incredibly special achievement, especially considering how that first half, you know, in the, in the early parts of it anyways, it looked like it was going to turn. You picked Manny Aparicio for man of the match, Charlie. There's a few examples who could have been there. I have no problem with Manny at all, but Lucas was right there with him, I'm sure. Absolutely. Absolutely. It was not a not an easy choice. And I, he's absolutely right. Forge couldn't break them down. And we could see towards, I think, especially the last maybe 15 minutes, when it was kitchen sink time, uh, they were very frustrated playing against that Pacific defense. They were they were rushing things, they were forcing things. Pacific made them not look like they had in the first half. By the second half, they were they were completely completely stifled by this Pacific defending. And it again, it's a credit to McNaughton, who has been there all year, has been incredible for this club all year. Thomas Mayer Jaguer hasn't played as much as he would have liked to this year because of yeah. injuries. But, you know, he was excellent alongside McNaughton at the Island Games last year, and we know how good he can be. But, again, like this 11-man effort to stop Forge's attack from getting through them was genuinely astonishing. Yeah, yeah Thomas Mejiguer started back-to-back -back games in the playoffs. He only started back-to-back -back games all season once. Yeah. <laughs> and he did it again at the crucial time of the season. Uh, I you know, I don't have the interview with us as uh, maybe some technical problems, but Jordan Haynes, I spoke to him after the game and he was so thrilled. He told me like two years ago, I was out of the sport. I never thought I'd have a moment like this. Yeah. And he, by the way, went up against Omar Brownie and did well, you know, and then on the other side, Caden Chung, who I know we've been a big fan of on the show for some time, arguably one of the best, if not the best right back in the league, finest fullback probably there is. Um, I thought was tremendous as well. You know, you talk, you mentioned the the, the, the intermovements and the, the fluidity, the change. It's not easy against Welshmen and, and Babouli, and then suddenly the play, they're breaking out of midfield and Borges, and they, they, they did a great Awu job. Awu was on his side, right? Yeah, Awu was yeah, that on was, his side. That was a great time. Yeah, it was a good matchup. A yeah. great one-on-one -on -one matchup in this game was Kwame Awu versus Caden Chung, and that's just yeah. the kind of thing you want to see in a final. It was It was fantastic to watch. It's a great point, guys, because a wooer is a tough, tough task, right? In any in any sense, and a lot of it came down, and sometimes you got better with Chung, uh, but I, I thought Chung was very good. Uh, here's our final interview from the reaction from Pacific FC uh, with right back Caden Chung inside the dressing room. All right, let's do it. I'm joined by right back Caden Chung. What a game you had today! What does this feel like? Oh, I've never won anything before in my life. This feeling is beyond anything I've ever felt. It's surreal, and honestly, I, I'm lost. I'm lost for words. But wow, just like, just a huge accomplishment for us. Wow, what a what a year it's been. So, oh, buzzing, buzzing, buzzing. <laughs> when you get to see Jamal Dixon lift that, what was the feeling like? Oh man, he's been our rock this whole year. He's the guy all the young guys go to, including myself. He's really taught me a lot about leading a team, and. You know, just seeing him, you know, he told me also this is his first win, first time being a champion, and wow, it's, it's just amazing for him. I'm so happy for him. You alone had a great game, but so did the team without the ball. You had to dig deep, because you know that throughout it took 90 minutes, really plus. Yeah, we knew after the first half, we went in at nil-nil, we knew that it was going to be a game of opportunities, and uh, we took one, and we, and we defended for our lives. Every man put in a shift, and this is the result, you know, winning. Well done, congratulations. Thank you, thank you.
Just wipe the camera there again, Nora. Thanks so much for your help. And again, thanks so much for One Soccer, all the audio there. Uh, they did a great job, and you can catch some of that stuff there on their shows as well. One Soccer today with Ollie and Wheels and Andy covering the final as well. Uh, but Chung, yeah, immense, a uh, great job. But just to, just great to see that raw emotion, Marty. Again, thanks for helping and put, uh, putting that together. But just nice to see and listen to some of that stuff again, right, Marty? Yeah, I think I think Caden's maybe selling himself short. He says he's never won anything <laughs> in his life, like Monopoly, maybe like. I don't know, he's never a game of cards. anything. Never Not just anything. What he he's like somehow I never win a game of cards. Never. Well, like, I, think, won that. I think that's actually <laughs> something that we're realizing here with how many of these specific players that is one of the that is the first trophy that they've won in football, and that's right. again that right. speaks to what the Canadian Premier League is, right? Because mm-hmm. what have they been? What have they had the opportunity to win? That's it. Most New sports. Them. Yep. Right. Otherwise, yeah. exactly. The opportunity so, is there for them. No, and yeah. again, the opportunity, the pathway going forward is important of course, to develop as a player, but you develop the ability to win things. Suddenly you're looking, oh, he's won. He knows how to win. And we don't know in four or five years' time where these players will be in an MLS dressing room or in another dressing room or in the same one. That characteristic of what it was like knowing how to win, that will serve them well and will make sure that people look at them differently. They will forever be winners. And the other thing I think about quickly, and we'll, we'll have a quick word about Forge, is that this is the first year we've had this four team playoff first year we've ever done it in a league and the team that didn't get home field advantage in the first weekend won they went away from home and away from home and won Mm -hmm. and what does that do for the belief next year and years to come with teams that finish third and fourth because they may they may this may not have happened for another 10 years home field advantage is massive in the sport but in the first year of it happening they gave belief to whoever next year finishes third or fourth and the year after, and the year after, because they go, you know what? Pacific did it. They went away, and they beat two of the best teams in the modern-day Canadian Premier League, and they offered them a chance. And that's yep. huge for our sport as well in our league, Marty. Yeah, 100%. That's 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 a great point. Also, the 14 playoff has been fantastic. I love uh, it. Like, yeah. it it's, uh, it's, um, and again, it's like... It, Charlie, you mentioned this, how Pacific dropped out of those, those home field. We, well, we spent maybe hours on this show talking about how crucial that was. And the, and Pa was someone who actually valued that quite highly as, as the season wore on. And the idea that you can drop out of that and maintain momentum, it's just, just more storylines, right? That's all we want. We want yeah, winners it, and we want storylines. Was it McNaughton that said there that they did it the hard way? Yeah. Yep. And they yeah, got it yep. done, which is, is absolutely true. They did. You know, they, 100%. there was a point in the season when it, really did look like they were going to finish in first place and the path to the trophy was going to be through Vancouver Island. But, you know, things happened. There were a whole load of circumstances. They fell out of it and they said, okay, fine, fine. Yeah. The, and, we don't really care what the path is. We're going there anyway. And things happen for a reason, right? Who knows? If they did have home and field advantage, they may not have won because they play a different way. Things can yeah. go differently, right? This inspired them. It galvanized them. It allowed them to go on the road and play the way they needed to play and find the way to unlock those teams and get the bounces and, and eventually it worked out. Uh, so every credit, congratulations to Pacific FC, a fine group of uh, people and people who work behind the scenes as well. Uh, you deserve it. Uh, a quick word on Forge. I spoke to Bobby Smyniotis after the game on the pitch. I know you guys covered it in the press conference, spoke to him as well. I thought it was as classy as ever. Just a true gentleman uh, once the whistle stops. He was very, very magnanimous in defeat. I did ask him if it entered his mind during the second half if it looked like his team was starting to look leggy based on their travel and the amount of games they had. And I knew, and I said, it's not an excuse. And he did take me on a little bit. He didn't want to make it an mm. excuse, but I think it was evident. He could see it in his team. Uh, what did you, what did he, was that the case in the press conference a little bit? And what did you guys think of that, that as well, Charlie? Yeah, it, it is there. We can't, we can't, you know, completely ignore it. And he agrees. But as you said, Bobby is, very, very classy in defeat. He does not want to make that the story at all whatsoever. He, you know, he says that he felt that both teams played a good game of football. Yeah. He, he thought that his, he agreed that his team did some of the the best passing movement that he'd seen them do in a while, especially in that first half. And at the end of the day, they didn't put one in the net. And, you know, that's, that's really, that's really the, the end of it. That's it. They didn't, yeah. they didn't score a goal. And, uh, that's 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 kind of all all he can say. Bobby is known. Bobby's been saying all year he knows that there will come a day that Forge are not the champions, mm. and that day came yesterday. And yeah. you know he he understands that these are these are things that happen in football. It's you know you don't you can't get too down about it. You can't be 
annoyed you can't make excuses just you have to you have to come back next year trust the process right my they've got they've got a pretty good process going they do and it, it's it's one of those things too where you're you're listening to bobby talk about this and and kyle becker as well in the post game and you kind of realize that you know as 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 crazy as this may sound to the two of you and the people listening this hasn't been a bad season for forge after no. this result of course not. you you could totally sit there and think you know what like Bobby's going to be able to sleep all right tonight because at the end of the day, they're going to be back in what February we're, we're going to get the draw for the, for the champions league here coming up in the next week or so. Yeah. Um, and it, um, I know I, it, it just, it, it just wasn't like, it wasn't meant to be at the end of the day, they played fantastic for, for at least part of the game. And that's maybe all you need in the final. And, you know, you just kind of look at it and think this wasn't a bad season at all. This was yeah. not a bad season. It's not a disappointment in any sense. I know that may sound crazy to, to Forge fans listening to this, but at the end of the day, man, this, this, is the, this is one of the greatest seasons we may ever see from a from a Canadian domestic team in a long time. Look, winning, is, winning is hard, which is yes. why when you do it, it is so special and you've got to enjoy it because yeah. only one win, only one. And that's why it's hard. And it doesn't mean that everybody else fails. And I know that great, the great line, about, you know, one of the greatest athletes or one of the greatest sportsmen, Ed and Senna once said, so to finish second, you are the first loser. I understand why they think that. But at the end of the day, they trust the process and look at the accomplishments in the place that they've been. You trust that process. Eventually, it will lead you to glory again. And they never went away from their identity ever. And they'll be fine. You know. And as you alluded to, Marty, we're a week away or so finding out who's going to be their CONCACAF Champions League last 16 two-legged opponent. And that's going to be a fantastic ride. And that's a great prize for them. They're not coming away empty-handed. They have got a prize ticket to play in the elite competition in this region in 2022 and represent this league, as will Pacific in CONCACAF League. We will have two teams in the Canadian Premier League playing in CONCACAF in 2022. That is exciting, as is everything else that's going around Canadian soccer in 2022. Probably a good way to wrap up because this will likely be our final show of 2021. Um, again, thank you to Pacific FC and all the teams, all the players, all the employees, all the staff, all the fans, everybody, everybody who's listened to it. So many of you I know on Saturday night, the supporters group grabbed a bunch of us and said, thanks for all the work and how much they enjoy this show as well. So we can't thank you enough. And I can't thank Benedict enough and Brady and Emily, but particularly these two gents right here, the heart and soul behind everything we do in the Canadian Premier League content, uh, Marty Thompson and Charlie O'Connor-Clark. Uh, we're going to get some time off, but before it, we have a present to give everybody. We're not done. CPL 50 is coming. We're going to announce CPL 50. Content continues to deliver. That's right. Coming out this week, a little sneak for you guys who are listening. We're not going to tell you everything, but we are about to come out with some content in December where media and coaches got together and will produce the best 50 players in the 2021 Canadian Premier League. So that's going to be exciting. Fellas, final words before we say goodbye to this year? I'll, I, I think really all there is is just to congratulate Pacific again. Yeah, you know, they deserve it, and it's 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 really really amazing for Vancouver Island for that club for everybody that works there and plays there and coaches there. Just congratulations! I can't CPL, say that CPL yeah. is purple, Marty. <laughs> Canada is purple. As as Charlie tried to get uh, Pa to say during the press conference, he wouldn't. Um, he wouldn't. He wouldn't. He would, not, he would not say that. No, no, he would not say that. Um, thank you to everyone who listened, everyone who read, and everyone who went to games this year. Um. This is, again, as you sort of mentioned off the top, a bunch of work went into it, Christian. I know you mentioned that, um, but thank you so much. It means it means so much to us that, that we can be a part of this. But yeah. I think we should do one more episode. I think we should do a, uh, for this year, I think we should do a quiz. Yeah, we should do a quiz. You're right. We should we, definitely do that. We, we, we got, we got some comments on we, Saturday. We did get feedback that people like that. So did People they? like the quiz like from the last quiz. year and the year before. Oh, just well, throwing it out there. I'm always about Christmas quizzes. You know, I just I know. I don't want to work you guys any harder than you already do, but let's get it done. If you want We're to do a quiz, let's happen. wrap up the season with a quiz. I'm all over it. What is going to happen? One more. All right, one more. There you are, everybody. You were privy to an on-air editorial meeting. <laughs> <laughs> and there will be another one. Uh, so uh, we thank you for everything. And we'll do a quiz. And we'll get these guys and we'll get Benedict on as well. And I'm sure Benedict, as ever, will bring tremendous value to the show comedically <laughs> microphone wise talent wise he's he, he is the most talented man among, amongst all of us and also doing school as we speak so that's you know, yeah. you know he's also doing that as well we forget 
much like all the Pacific players, we forget how young, talented Benedict is as well. Uh, all right, we'll wrap it up. We'll see you for the quiz. Thanks, everybody. I hope you enjoyed this. And again, a celebration. Thanks, uh, Pacific MD. Thanks to One Soccer for the audio. Thanks to Charlie and Marty. And I thank you for everyone for listening. Enjoy the rest, and we'll speak to you soon. Perfect.